One Zambia, One Nation. Live from our Lusaka studios with the news, my name is Collins Mienga and my sign language interpreter is Chola Kaoma. The headlines. President Edgar Lungu was today at the Supreme Court to witness the admission to the bar of the second and last batch of legal practitioners. President Inonge Wina has described the first Republican president, Kenneth Kaunda, as a man who remains a treasure of wisdom and unique talents. The government has apologized to United Nations resident coordinator Janet Rogan and the diplomatic community for attacks on the UN country representative by the opposition. UPND. And in sports, Minister of Sports Moses Mawere says government is not against national football team coach Western Mirenda showing interest in the vacant Cameroon national football team job. And now, here are the details. President Edgar Lungo was today at the Supreme Court to witness the admission to the bar of the second and last batch of legal practitioners. The president was accompanied by the First Lady Esther, Presidential Affairs Minister Freedom Sikazwe and other State House staff. A total of 312 legal practitioners, who included the president's daughter, Chies Lungo, successfully passed the December 2017 repeater's examination of the legal practitioner's qualifying examination course. Also among those admitted to the bar was Minister of National Guidance and Religious Affairs, Godfrida Sumaili's daughter, Womba Sumaili. Joyce Yatubi now brings us the details in the following report. It's always a joyous occasion for those in the legal profession to be admitted to the bar. A total of 312 lawyers have been admitted to the bar after successfully passing the December 2017 repeater's examination of the legal practitioner's qualifying examination course. There was jubilation for most families at the Supreme Court grounds. Among them, the first family, whose daughter, Chie Solongu, was among those joining the ranks of the legal profession. Her parents, President Edgar Lungu and First Lady Esther, could not hide their excitement. Prior to being presented with their certificates, the new advocates were addressed by the Chief Justice, Irene Mambilima, who urged them to be exemplary in their conduct. And Law Association of Zambia President, Eddie Mwitwa, told the new advocates that it is their duty to ensure the image of the legal profession is not tarnished. It would be a sad day for the profession to see any one of you whose success we are celebrating today being suspended from practice or we're still being struck off the roll. The practice of the law is not intended to be a sprint or a short distance run. It is a marathon. In, uh, it is a marathon run which is also highly rewarding when you get your basics right. And in this run you will find your attributes of tenacity, determination and patience welcome allies. Meanwhile, Zambia Institute of Advanced Legal Education, Ziali Director Anne Malata Ononuju, said improving the pass rate at both final and repeaters examinations is a priority at Ziali. It is our sincere hope that Ziali's current and ongoing efforts to improve the pass rates will be wholeheartedly supported financially and through human and technical support by the government, the Ministry of Justice and all external stakeholders. A total of 612 candidates attempted the December 2017 repeater's examination, the largest number seen at Ziali. Joy, Siatumi, ZNBC News, Osaka. 
And President Lungu has signed into law the National Health Insurance Bill, which now becomes the National Health Insurance Act Number no. 2 of 2018. President Lungu signed the new law on the 25th of April 2018. The President's Special Assistant for Press and Public Relations, Emos Chanda, has confirmed to journalists in Lusaka today. Mr. Chanda says the move signifies as an important moment in the history of the country. He says Zambia has been yearning for policies that will make it possible for citizens to have equitable health care delivery for all Zambians. Mr. Chanda says with the new law, quality health care delivery is guaranteed for all Zambians. He is happy that the new law will also work towards reducing the income disparities and inequalities for most Zambians as it will provide health care for all. This is a significantly important moment in the history of the country uh, uh, because for 54 years the country has yearned for a provision in the law and policies that will provide, make it possible for the country to have equitable health care delivery for all Zambians regardless of economic status. It's an, uh, an important moment, significant uh, important moment because it provides access to quality health care for all Zambians. What it does is that uh, as a country aspires uh, uh, to, to, to bridge the gap about income inequalities, uh, to try and deal with the, as you know, Zambia is one of the most unequal societies in terms of income distribution. The National Health Insurance Act works towards uh, reducing the income uh, disparities and inequalities, the gap between the rich and the poor, because it provides health care uh, 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 facilities to all. Vice President Inonge Wina has described the first Republican president, Kenneth Kaunda, as a man who remains a treasure of wisdom and unique talents. Mrs. Wina says the life of Dr. Kaunda remains an icon in domestic region and world affairs due to the immense contribution he made in various spheres of life. She said this during a Thanksgiving and recognition service for Dr. Kaunda at the UCZ St. Paul's congregation in Lusaka. Mrs. Wina also stated that Dr. Kaunda has continued to build bridges of peace for the benefit of Zambia, Africa and the world. She has since urged every citizen to emulate a selfless service of the first president to serve faithfully in the best interests of the country. And UCZ General Secretary Mulambia Kabonde says Dr. Kaunda's lifestyle is to value and cherish one another. Speaking at the same event, daughter of the first Republican president, Cheswa Sluiza, thanked the church and government for the continued support rendered to her father. Dr. Kaunda also followed the saying, blessed are the peacemakers, which is the teaching of Jesus Christ. Therefore, among the many lessons we pick from his life is the gift of peace building as our first option, which applied in many situations of life. We are all reminded that this is a rare quality God uses when raising a nation of his own. May the good Lord continue to use this gift in him to build bridges of peace for the benefit of Zambia, Africa, and the world at large. Even at the helm of the position of this great nation, it did not just say this slogan, one Zambia, one nation, but it was his lifestyle to unite and to value other people that have been created in the image of God. When I come over to be with you at the church, I realize that this commandment should continue to be the foundation of life. When we are talking about one Zambia, one nation, we are thinking about loving our neighbor. I am truly grateful and humbled that the church remembered me today 
and we are here having this fantastic service and I'm thanking you sincerely for this. And first president Kenneth Kaunda has urged young people to be agents of love and peace in the country. Dr. Kaunda says it is love and unity that made the founding fathers to work together regardless of their tribes. He said this ahead of his 94th birthday tomorrow. Hector Simfuke now reports. Thank you. First Republican President Kenneth Kaunda has lived an illustrious life filled with many experiences. Dr. Kaunda and his contemporaries played a critical role in the liberation of the country. On Saturday, 28th of April, it turns 94. The former head of state has shared most of his life with many Zambians. He has been known to propagate peace and unity by promoting the One Zambia One Nation motto. A ZNBC news crew today visited Dr. Kaunda at his residence in Lusaka ahead of his birthday. At 94 years, Dr. Kaunda is still able to skillfully play the piano for his visitors. Dr. Kaunda has advised young people to be agents of peace and love. If family they brought up was extremely useful for me. So, each family, each the people of Zambia as a whole. One Zambia, one nation is a, a lesson I carry home to my heart. And uh, when I look at Jesus Christ, our Savior, He teaches love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I try to follow the lesson. So my approach to the One Zambian Nation program was very hurtful to me. The former president further encouraged young people to exercise and watch what they eat. Hector Simfukwe, ZNBC News, Lusaka. Meanwhile, the family of Dr. Kaunda has distanced itself from any involvement in a birthday celebration being organized by the Zambia Association of Musicians, ZAM, in honor of the former president. Speaking to Zanis in an interview this morning, family representative Tilienji Kaunda said the family did not permit nor sanction the association to hold any event in honor of Dr. Kaunda. Mr. Kaunda revealed that the family clearly stated that they were not going to have any involvement in the matter but were surprised to see the advert in the papers and wondered why the association had gone ahead even after the family's position on the matter. Uh, this follows a series of adverts that have continued to appear in the national newspapers regarding musical event to be held tomorrow Saturday April 28th in honor of the first Republican president's 94th birthday organized by ZAM. The British government says the proposed national dialogue must be Zambian led for it is for it to be successful. British High Commissioner to Zambia Fergus Cochrane Diet says for the dialogue to be successful, the government must also involve the church, civil society and the private sector. Speaking during the United Kingdom's National Day celebrations in honor of Queen Elizabeth's 92nd birthday, Mr. Cochrane Diet said the Zambian government must also consider redistributing its wealth to benefit 60% of people in rural areas areas who still live in abject poverty and Minister of Water and Development, Sanitation and Environment Protection Dennis Wanchinga has thanked the UK government for the support it has continued to render to Zambia's development agenda. Indeed, as Zambia's oldest friend, we remain a staunch partner. The UK has been a major source of development assistance to Zambia for over 50 years. 
Happily, Zambia has made progress towards middle income status, and its gross national income per capita is now around $1,300. Consequently, the country increasingly has the money to address its own development needs and aid levels are falling. So, the third challenge for the Zambian government is making the right choices to ensure that the considerable wealth in Lusaka and the Copper Belt is redistributed to benefit the 60% who stubbornly, 60%, over the last 10 years or so, who still live in deplorable po poverty. Over the years, ladies and gentlemen, our relations have translated into meaningful cooperation in various areas such as agriculture, health, education, water and sanitation, and the promotion of gender equality. Let me therefore take this opportunity to express our gratitude to the government of the United Kingdom for the support it continues to render to the Zambian government in the development agenda of this country. The government has apologized to United Nations Resident Coordinator Janet Rogan and the diplomatic community for attacks on the UN country represented by the opposition UPND. Minister of Foreign Affairs Joe Malange says members of the diplomatic corps need to be accorded the respect they deserve because they are in Zambia to enhance development. Speaking during a political dialogue meeting with the European Union diplomats accredited to Zambia in Lusaka today, Mr. Malange noted that EU's commitment to dialogue with Zambia on various issues. The minister has also assured the EU of Zambia's commitment in upholding peace and security in the region. An EU ambassador to Zambia, Alessandro Marian, says he's happy with the continuous political dialogue with Zambia, with the last one having been held in March last year. Mr. Marian has revealed that the EU is promoting electoral reforms ahead of the 2021 elections. It is only in the border that we give the respect that the members of the, the, the diplomatic corps deserve in this country. Diplomats are in this country to harness development and that will only be in conjunction with the government of the day and they are not here to see how best they can increase the momentum of an opposition party which, which only vision is to see how quickly they can get into state house. You have serious core business to do here and that government will respect you and regret the attacks on Her Excellency General Rogan. We are very pleased that since we last met there has also been a ministerial political dialogue between the European Union and the SAD at which Zambia played an active role and at which a number of positive and forward-looking conclusions were reached on global and regional issues encompassing security, democracy, economy and cooperation. And of course it is for us very important that our bilateral dialogue should also give us the chance to discuss together some of the key challenges faced by the region, by the regional organization to which Zambia belongs and falling from this, the option for joint action. A chief government spokesperson, Dora Celia, says a process is on course to establish a restructured and effectively enhanced communication strategy which consistently disseminates information over various development activities. Ms. Celia says government wants to ensure citizens in the nation and other stakeholders are effectively communicated to over its developmental agenda. Speaking at an Eastern and Southern African Management Institute, a SAMI facilitated public relations training for ministry spokespersons and parliamentary liaison officers, Ms. Celia said time has now come to rebrand government image by transforming the current communication system. She noted that it is imperative for those with responsibility to disseminate or facilitate the information chain flow within respective ministries to have a sense of ownership 
to the cause of having a fully informed citizenry. Speaking earlier, Minister of Information and Broadcasting Services Acting Permanent Secretary Isaac Chipampe aged participants to be part of an enhanced information dissemination system by putting their learning to practice. And we acknowledge that the government has not sometimes communicated efficiently, uh, effectively, timely, in a coordinated fashion, and that sometimes we've actually relegated the function of communication to the end, and we think that everything else is so important except communicating. But in a democracy, a government is for the people. So the people are entitled to know the good things and even the bad things that are, uh, are happening so that we can correct them. It's not just about us communicating to the citizens. It's also to help us hear the people and hear them well so that we can realign. What do the people want to see in the Ministry of Arts, in the Ministry of Gender, in Home Affairs? What do the people want to see? We have to hear them so that we can influence government policy. Government spent 129 million budget for the cholera outbreak, a disease that can be prevented. 129 million budget can build you 645 one by three classroom doors. The Kuomboka traditional ceremony of the Lozi people of Western Province will take place in Limulunga district tomorrow. People from different parts of the country, as well as foreign tourists, have gathered in Mongo ahead of the ceremony. Meanwhile, across of the people in the town gathered at the Mayuma as early as 06 hours this morning to have a glimpse of the peddlers who were competing in the regatta competition. The event is a preparatory for the Kumboka ceremony of the Lozi people. ZNBC's Gift Inambao reports that the pre ceremony event was incident free with Zambia police patrolling the area. You're watching the main news live broadcast and just about now we take a break. We have more stories coming up ahead. Keep watching. I'll be back shortly. Thank you so much for still staying with us. We now continue with the news. Now, three cabinet ministers have delivered a message of condolences to Chief Kasoma Lunga of Lunga District in Wapula province following the death of his wife. President Edgar Lungu is shocked and saddened by the death of the chief's wife. The three cabinet ministers who were sent to Lunga by President Lungu are Emerin Kabanshi of Community Development, who is also a Wapula member of parliament, Ronald Chitotela of Housing and Infrastructure Development, and Dr. Chitalu Chilufia of the Ministry of Health and Chief Kasoma Lunga has thanked President Lungu for mourning with him. He has further encouraged the President to continue delivering development countrywide and not to get distracted by people who he says have no agenda for the country. The late wife of Chief Kasoma Lunga, Paulina Chivamba Philemon, was born in 1943 and died on the 24th of April 2018 after an illness. The remains of the Queen have since been interred. Government has signed a memorandum of understanding with various universities in a quest to develop the road sector. Special Assistant to the President for Project Monitoring and Implementation, Andrew Chela, says the MOU is aimed at striking partnerships with universities around the country to make informed decisions in the road sector. More in the following report. In a bid to expose university students to various developmental projects, government has signed a memorandum of understanding with universities to incorporate theoretical concepts from the lecture rooms to the construction sector. Special assistance to the president for project implementation and monitoring, Andrew Chella, says academic partnership will assist in implementing standard innovation in road construction. First and foremost, Zambia is for, is for everybody. Uh, in the past we found that uh, the road construction was left to, to RID, RID and then RFU. But now we're getting like a bit coming in to at least help with uh, the process of implementing these road projects in Zambia. You know there's been a cry uh, in 
the few instances where people are talking about the, uh, the cost of doing work positives and there's been a cry of uh, drainages. People say you construct a road after a short while you see that uh, there are cost roads. And there are some of the things that can be thrown to the academia to connect with the physical part of constructing the road. And secretary to the cabinet, Patrick Kangwa, says the engagement of academicians will restructure the road sector by offering practical solutions to the construction sector. Despite this success, research is needed on how to innovatively improve on the program, enhance its systems and controls, and identify measures on how to ring fence the toll's revenue for road maintenance. Take us to implementation. And National Road Fund Chief Executive Officer Wallace Mumba says the move will assist in the social economic development as a country. We've performed quite well. We've had the number of roads that have been done today. If you drive on the Chingola Sorways, I think you may not even use a detour. Uh, the, the, the township roads are being worked on. I think it's, uh, uh, there's been a serious um, focus uh, uh, from your government to improve the road infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> With this collaboration, it is anticipated that experts will make informed decisions that will contribute to the development of the road sector. As Natungoma, ZNBC News, Lusaka. The Zambian and Mozambican governments are working at strengthening their defense and security ties to consolidate the existing cordial relations. Minister of Defense Davis Chama says enhanced collaboration between the Zambia and Mozambican defense and security wings will help deepen the two countries' ties. He said this during the opening of the Zambia-Mozambique 10th Ministerial Joint Permanent Commission in Belaina, Mozambique. Jacqueline Stanley of Zanis now has the details in the following report. Despite having been ruled by two different colonial powers, the relationship between Zambia and Mozambique has continued to flourish in all sectors of development. To further cement the already existing relationship on defense and security, the Zambian government through the ministers of defense and home affairs are in Mozambique for the 10th session of the Joint Permanent Commission on Defense and Security. Speaking during the ministerial opening session, Zambia's Defense Minister, Davis Chama, says the meeting is a testimony of the strong bond of friendship that exists between Zambia and Mozambique. This meeting is a testimony, not only the strong bond of, fresh, of friendship that exists between Zambia and Mozambique, but also the continued commitment by the respective governments to the business of this commission. I have no doubt, therefore, that with such an unwavering commitment, this commission will continue to enhance cooperation between our defense and security services, as well as strengthen bilateral relations between our two friendly republics. And Mozambique National Minister of Defense, Atanasio Mutemoke, says the meeting will deepen and consolidate reciprocal knowledge between the two countries and improve coordination between the defense and security institutions. It is hoped that the recommendations made by the 10th Joint Permanent Commission on Defense and Security sitting in Mozambique will enhance further the existing bilateral relationship between Zambia and Mozambique. Reporting for Zanis in Bilen, Mozambique, I am Jacqueline Sitali. 
And now, President Lungo is tomorrow expected to launch the Make Zambia Clean, Green and Health campaign. The relaunch event will be held at the new Soweto Annex Market. Activities aligned for the relaunch include the cleaning of Soweto Market and planting of trees before speeches are made. The Minister of Local Government and Housing Vincent Mwale confirmed the development to Zanis in an interview today. More in this report. This is the cleanness that greets you when you patronize the streets of the central business district in Lusaka province. At least one can walk with pride without the shame of being greeted by litter. It is against this background that government wants the cleanness to be extended to other parts of the country through the Make Zambia Clean, Green and Healthy campaign. President Edgar Lungu has taken keen interest in spearheading the relaunching of the Make Zambia Clean, Green and Healthy campaign. I wish to appeal to my countrymen to join me on the 28th of April this year, 2018, as we relaunch the Keep Zambia Clean, Green and Healthy. Meanwhile, President Lungu has suggested that one day in a month should be set aside for cleaning by all Zambians. This is a campaign we want to launch this month and continue with the practice every month, at least one day in a month. Local government and housing minister Vincent Mwale says his desire is to see to it that Zambia becomes the cleanest country in the Sadiq region. So we thought uh, we relaunched the Keep Zambia Clean campaign, but this time around um, add other aspects of uh, you know, tree planting and beautifying our, our surroundings, uh, doing some landscaping, um, uh, you know, maintaining our you know, uh, flowers and, and planting trees that will provide fruits to you know, ourselves and future generations and so on. And, and this in turn will keep ourselves healthy um, as a country. The launch taking place at uh, uh, Soweto Market, Soweto Annex, we have the president and his cabinet, entire cabinet, and uh, uh, you know, people from the army and uh, from the security, you know, defense forces, uh, civil servants, the clergy, and, and uh, you know, many invited guests uh, turning up for that who clean Soweto Market and then do speeches. And after that, the president will also use this occasion to open the new Soweto market that we've constructed, also known as BH market, for vegetables and, and fruits. Um, uh, so the and two associations have welcomed government's move to relaunch the Make Zambia Clean, Green and Healthy campaign. So the relaunch of the Keep you know, Zambia Clean, Green and Health is quite inevitable and we must commend His Excellency the President. I'm sure he's demonstrating, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, leadership. He's just showing us an example. But very importantly, it must start from us as Zambians. It must start at individual level. It must start at family level and uh, institutional. It must be appreciated by every well-meaning Zambian because it's the only way that we are going to save the climate. It's the only way that we are going to maintain the clean environment. So the relaunching, we would like to appeal to every well-meaning Zambian to embrace this idea. Tomorrow, April 28th, President Lungu is expected to relaunch the Make Zambia Clean, Green and Healthy campaign. Later, the president will hand over the newly constructed BH market at Soweto Annex. The market will absorb more than 1,000 marketeers. Traders can now trade in a decent and dignified environment which is conducive for human habitation. For Zanis, I'm Lakson Makodza. Minister of Lands, Jean Kapata, has commended Midwives Association of Zambia for its initiative to supplement government efforts to reduce maternal mortality rates in the country. Launching the Midwives Week today on behalf of Vice President Inonge Wina, Ms. Kapata said the fight against maternal mortality can only be achieved with the strategic partnerships with the community. She stated that government and stakeholders have trained about 5,122 midwives and other health workers to help mothers survive hemorrhage after birth and help babies breathe. And Minister of Health Director Nasing Lonia Mwape says government in partnership with the Midwives Association is working hard to change the bad perception people have about the nursing profession.
securing the future generation by saving the lives of women, neonates, and the children. The midwifery profession has a significant bearing in determining the maternal and neonatal mortality rates of any country. This being the case, it is imperative for the Midwifery Association to play a role in developing and strengthening the midwifery profession through training and leadership of midwives, as this will promote best midwifery practices. All of us must be proud to be midwives, that's why we are here. If we are not proud to be midwives and we don't have the compassion that it takes for us to be naked and midwives, ladies and gentlemen, it's not too late. Leave the profession for those that have the compassion to provide the care that we are here to provide. We know and we are all aware that uh, uh, our professional image has been battled for a long time now. Meanwhile, the Minister of Health has noted with concern some pictures circulating on social media purporting to be images of a ward at Mbereshi Mission Hospital in Kawamwa, Luapula Province, which is swarmed with women. The ministry says it has conducted due diligence and confirmed that the pictures did not come from any Zambian health facility. The Minister of Health has emphasized that services at the health facility are running well and smoothly, contrary to what is portrayed in the picture depicting congestion in the ward. This is according to a statement made available to ZNBC News by Minister of Health, Head of Communications and External Relations, Stanislas Ngosa. Mr. Ngosa says it is highly unethical for someone to spread or publish images of half-naked women in the media. Are you still watching the main news? And just now we take another break. And on the other side, join me with Business News with Black Shortly. And our Business News in detail. Minister of Mines and Minerals Development Richard Musuko has announced that the ministry has resumed the issuance, renewal and transfer of mining rights in five districts in eastern, central and Lusaka provinces with effective from Wednesday the 2nd of May 2018. The districts are Petauke, Vubu, Nyimba, Lufunsa and Luano. Mr. Musuko says out of 158 mining rights issued, only 70 have been found to be compliant. The Minister of Mines has explained that the 880 defaulting mining rights holders have been issued with default notices and shall be accorded sufficient time in which to exculpate themselves. Mr. Musuko has stated that those who shall fail to remedy the defaults within a stipulated time shall have their mining rights terminated. And Mr. Musuko said his ministry is yet to determine whether to allow blasting to continue or not at Konkola Copper Mines in Changa open pit where fly rocks from the blast operations reached some houses in Inchanga North Township in Chingola on April the 21st 2013. The government is losing about 35 million kwacha daily following the breakdown of the second pontoon at Kazungula border post. The Minister of Works and Supply Felix Mutanti has since directed the Engineering Services Corporation ESCO management to ensure that the second pontoon is operational within a week. Justin Akakulubelwa now gives us the details in the following report. The challenges at the Kazungula border post seem to be deepening with the rise in water levels on the Zambez River. As government registers a daily revenue loss of about 35 million kwacha as a result of having only one operational ferry at the border post. We heard earlier on from the station manager from Zambia Revenue Authority that on a daily basis Zambia Revenue Authority is losing close to 35 million kwacha. This means that the economy is losing that extent of uh, money. And when you uh, compare to the spare pass that are being procured of only 30,000, surely 
this shouldn't be an issue. Minister of Works and Supply Felix Mtati has since directed the Engineering Services Corporation ESCO management to ensure that the second pontoon is operational within a week. You are only given a week to make sure that the second pontoon begins to work. We can't continue to lose money. The minister who toured and inspected operations at the border post has been briefed on some of the challenges being faced by ESCO. Due to the high water levels, we have quite a lot of mechanical breakdowns on our drives on the pontoons and this is because the currents in the river are quite high and therefore the, the engines and the, its associated the propulsion units and the swing joints, they are having to do more work than they normally would do. Mr. Mtati has assured ESCO workers that government is doing everything possible to save the corporation. So we are geared as ESCO through government to support them. One, to continue to expand the pontoon business. Two, to look at other business opportunity. And three, to make sure that they maximize the retention of you, our colleagues who have supported us for so long. Meanwhile, Kazungula District Commissioner Pascalina Msokotwani has thanked the government for its efforts to improve service delivery at the border post. You all know that PF is a pro-poor government and um, it's a listening government whereby whenever you have challenges, you call upon your bosses, you know, they always come to our aid. Justin, Akakurubewa, ZNBC News, Livingston. Government has paid over 13 million kwacha to 45 local contractors in Northern Province. Northern Province Minister Brian Mondubile says the payment to the local contractors and subcontractors was done early this week. Mr. Mondubile says this has shown that government is committed to empowering local contractors so that they can contribute to the country's economic development. The minister said this in an interview with ZNBC News in Lusaka today. And Mr. Mondubile has congratulated the PF councillors for scooping 12 out of 16 seats. We promised the Zambian people to create employment. Now when you look at employment creation, you are looking at people from different categories, uh, starting from the lowest. Uh, Northern province is a rural province where in most of those areas you find uh, non-skilled labor. So when you're creating employment for non-skilled labor, you're looking at a special category where you specifically provide an opportunity where they can participate and an opportunity for the local contractors at that level of uh, road, uh, routine maintenance is such an opportunity where employment has been created. Um, when you look at uh, our source of income in most of those provinces, our people rely on agriculture predominantly and uh, at a subsistence level, meaning that they only participate in the economy maybe four months out of uh, every 12 months. So clearly they are absent from the economy most of the year. Thank you for staying with us on the NBC TV main news. We now present sports news on the segment tonight. Minister of Sports Moses Maweri says government is not against national football team coach Wetson Nurenda showing interest in the vacant Cameroon national football team job. Details after this. The Zambia Medicines Regulatory Authority, ZAMRA, a statutory body which was created by an act of parliament, has the responsibility of regulating the pharmaceutical industry in Zambia. With the sports news in detail, my name is Joy Siatsui. Minister of Sports, Moses Mawere, says government is not against national football team coach Wetson Nurenda showing interest in the vacant Cameroon national football team job. Mawere told ZNBC Sports News in an interview in Kitwe that anyone is free to explore their opportunities elsewhere. He says Nurenda's interest in the vacant job does not put government in a position to doubt his patriotism. Meanwhile, the Minister of Sports Sport says he expects Zambia to regain its dominance in the upcoming Kosafa tournament. Uh, in life is normal. 
uh, you don't close uh, opportunities for anyone. If you feel there are opportunities out there, uh, uh, anyone is is free to 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 explore those opportunities uh, because it's normal with coaches uh, and they're also human beings they want to, to see. but uh, what is more important is for me to promote sport in Zambia so if he's part of it we would want to move together if he's not then he, we can talk about him but as far as we're concerned as it is right now is with us so he's part of the plan Now, the Zambia Under-20 and 17 national teams have qualified to the finals of the International Handball Federation IHF Africa Zone 6 and 7 tournaments. Both teams qualified after beating Zimbabwe Under-20 and 17 teams 32 to 16 and, six, and 33 to 26 respectively. And Handball Association of Zambia Technical Director Chile Kwawalia says the Zambian teams are strong sides, also capable of qualifying to the continental IHF Africa tournament slated for September. Tamboyo Katota has more. They are through to the finals of the International Handball Federation Africa Zone 6 and 7 Championship. The under-20 and under-17 men's national teams qualified after beating their Zimbabwean counterparts 32 to 16 and 33 to 26 respectively. Under-17 national team coach Irene Berg is confident her side will play with the same level of strength in the final. I hope that we can perform the, at the same level as today, that the players can uh, just rest now and be prepared for tomorrow. And Handball Association of Zambia Technical Director Chile Kwabwalea says proceeding to the finals will improve the country's world ranking. For a country, meaning we are moving at, at a step ahead in world ranking. Meaning, as under 17, we are likely to be ranked seven among, among its what, between two, what, two zones. Yes, zone seven and zone six. The Zambia under 20 and under 17 handball teams will tomorrow both play Madagascar in the finals. Etambuyu Katota, ZNBC Sports, Lusaka. Now, tomorrow marks 25 years since the Zambian national football team perished off the coast of Gabon. The team was on its way to Senegal for a World Cup qualifier against the Taranga Lions. In the following report, we relieve the memories of Zambia's worst air crash. In order to proclaim your name as our God, Father, I thank you. On the evening of 27th April 1993, a DHC-5 Buffalo Transport aircraft of the Zambia Air Force crashed into the Atlantic Ocean shortly after taking off from Libreville, Gabon. The flight was carrying most of the Zambia national football team to a FIFA World Cup qualifier against Senegal in Dakar. All 25 passengers and five crew members were killed. The official investigation report has to date not been made public. The Chipolopolo were a very promising Zambia national team, who at the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul shocked Italy by beating them four goals to nil. But the cold hand of death descended on the team on that fateful evening. The members of the national team killed in the crash were buried in what became known as Heroes Eka, just outside the Independence Stadium in Lusaka. A new side was quickly assembled, led by Kalusha Walia, and had a huge task to qualify Zambia to the 1994 USA World Cup. But that was not to be. 19 years later, in 2012, Zambia won the Africa Cup of Nations in Libreville, only a few meters from the crash site, and that victory was dedicated to the fallen Gabon heroes. It is now 25 years, but their memories live on. Joy Siatubi, ZNBC Sport, Lusaka. And finally on the segment, Dane Moore is the only Zambian golfer 
out of the 23 golfers to qualify to the final round of the ongoing Zambia Open Golf Tournament being held at Nkana Golf Club in Kitwe. Moore made the cut on the final day after finishing on 73 points. His counterpart, Madalis Omutia, joined the rest of the casualties on the chopping board, completing his second round 5 over 72. South Africa's Rook van der Spy commands the leader's board with an impressive 7 under from both rounds. Another South African, Colin Nell, is second on the leader's board with 5 under. 150,000 United States dollars is the prize money for this year's event, which no Zambian has ever won. And that will do for the sports segment tonight. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great sporting weekend. Wow, well, that sporting item now concludes the main news. But before we go, let's take a quick look at the stories that made headlines. President Edgar Lungu was today at the Supreme Court to witness the admission to the bar of the second and last batch of legal practitioners. The president was accompanied by the First Lady Esther, Presidential Affairs Minister Freedom Sikaze and the other State House staff. Vice President Inonge Wina has described the first Republican president, Kenneth Kaunda, as a man who remains a treasure of wisdom and unique talents. She said this during the Thanksgiving and recognition service for Dr. Kaunda at the UCZ St. Paul's congregation in Lusaka. Government has apologized to the United Nations Resident Coordinator Janet Rogan and the diplomatic community for attacks on the UN country represented by the opposition UPND. The Minister of Foreign Affairs Joe Malangi says members of the diplomatic court need to be accorded the respect they deserve because they are in Zambia to enhance development. Finally, the Minister of Sports, Moses Mawe, says government is not against national football team coach Watson Nurenda showing interest in the vacant Cameroon national football team job. Mawe told the NBC Sports News in an interview in Kitwe that anyone is free to explore the opportunities elsewhere. And that concludes our main news. Thank you so much for watching. On behalf of the entire production team and my sign language interpreter Chola Kauma, I'm calling Zmiya. Keep watching ZNBC. It's bye for now.